Hi, my name is Rolf Weber. I'm professor of cognitive psychology at the University of Oslo. The overarching theme of my research is feelings. Examples are experience of beauty, interest at school, and high experiences. The culmination of my work is the book Critical Feeling. The title of the book is derived from critical thinking, but the book deals with feelings. Therefore, its title, Critical Feeling. Critical feeling is the strategic use of feelings to optimize outcomes, both personal and societal. It is derived from critical thinking, that is, the strategic use of reasoning capacities to optimize outcomes. Let me begin with a finding that is relevant to personal relationships, business and this interview. When people speak with an accent, as I do, they are believed less. Scholars thought that this has to do with stereotypes and prejudice, but this is not necessarily the case. Researchers have found out that it is the difficulty of understanding accented speech that decreases believability. If people are made aware of that they do not understand uh, accented speech well, then they can circumvent the bias and they believe even accented speech more. Now let us come to an example from school. Similar to the accent finding, research has found that teachers grade essays that are written in a bad handwriting worse than uh, essays written in a nice handwriting. Now, again, it was thought that this has to do with stereotypes, but research has found it has to do with the difficulty with which teachers can understand the handwriting. And if they are made aware of that, if they are warned that they understand the text less, they can circumvent the bias and give better grades to essays with bad handwriting. These are just two of the phenomena discussed in the book. There are many more, like falling in love, pursuit of happiness, war propaganda, increasing interest at school, and acquiring refined taste in art. The greatest challenge was that the scope of the literature was wide and overwhelming. So I had to choose what to discuss and what not to discuss. I treated those things more extensively that are relatively new, like the role of familiarity, and I just cursorily discussed what is already familiar to the readers, like emotional regulation or aggression. The book covers how we come from critical thinking to critical feeling. It discusses some basic ideas, for example, that behind every percept and thought is a feeling. And that is why the concept of critical feeling is so important. The second part discusses applications of critical feeling that range from well-being to skill acquisition to things that are more relevant for society, like school, art and religion. The key feature of this book is the introduction of the concept of critical feeling. The first part will appeal to scholars because it discusses critical thinking and how we come to critical feeling. And the second part is more applied and will certainly appeal to practitioners who learn how to use feelings strategically. Although this is a scholarly work, the book is written in a style accessible to non-experts. It should appeal to a broad range of readers, including scholars in psychology, philosophy and education, but also to practitioners who want to know how to improve a situation through feelings. It is the first book on critical feeling and expands the means to improve our life.